HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Fletcher Tilton, Attorneys at Law, serving Central Massachusetts and beyond with responsive solutions. Integrity, leadership, and excellence, Fletcher Tilton. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, longtime town employee Louis Bonjot retires after 46 years of service. The Golden Spoon Restaurant will be closing temporarily after 35 years before reopening at a new location. The Hopkinton Hillers are making the playoff push in sports and the local veterans of the Battle of Iwo Jima were honored at the Boston State House. But first, a special town meeting was held regarding a potential purchase of land at 203 Pond Street. The town had the right to first refusal. The special town meeting. To start off the special town meeting, Article 3 was motioned to come first from Dave Goldman since the article was the vote for the land purchase and the other two articles were contingent upon the purchase being voted through. John Mosier summarized the selectmen's support to purchase the land. The parcel we're discussing has unique and compelling attributes. Most noteworthy, the property abuts the Upton State Forest and across Pond Street is state-owned land leading to Lake Whitehall. <clears throat> the location offers tremendous opportunities for connection and access for the community and the region. It is also consistent with our recently adopted Hopkinton vision statement. Director of Land Protection at the Sudbury Valley Trustees, Krista Collins, also backed the purchase. Space and Recreation Plan Goals. 203 Pond Street is shown as an area of conservation and recreation interest on the 2009 Action Plan map and ranked highest among properties evaluated for open space benefits in a 1997 study. Because of its size and proximity to existing conservation lands, 203 Pond Street sits between 1,357 acres of the Upton State Forest and 815 acres of the Whitehall State Park. Ken Wisemantle of the Planning Board stated this is the best subdivision he has seen since there are already 32 acres of open space regardless if the town purchases. This is the best open space subdivision development that I've seen in all my years on the Planning Board. It provides for connecting trails, it provides for open space, it provides for a relatively small cluster of houses, it preserves 70 three percent of the space as open space. Our standard in our bylaw is only 50 percent. So basically the planning board found that this is a good subdivision, that the two thousand or two million dollar is a very high price for open space. Typically you see open space in the in the approximately fifteen to twenty five thousand dollars an acre. Chair of the Community Preservation Committee shadowed many of Wisemantle's points and revealed the CPC is not in support of the purchase. And just mentioned, and we thought that was a great deal for the town. We try and purchase open lands to the best use of the funds that were given, are given us. And we felt that the 32 acres really encompassed the spirit of the open space land and was a great value for the town. We got 32 acres of open space, we're not spending additional money, and there's additional property just south of that being donated by the Pines. So we're not just looking at that area, we're looking at the area below it, which would all become part of the open space. So we believe that it's, it's a very good deal for the town not to vote for this. And the, the, the CPC voted six to two against going forward and spending money on this. Dave Goldman of the Hopkinton Area Land Trust was in support, stating at least $400,000 would be raised for the property should the town purchase, and if the town does not, it limits connectivity to other lands such as the Upton State Forest from 800 feet to 50 feet. If you look at what happens is that there's a 
provision for a buffer of 50 or 100 feet in here. And so the connection gets narrowed down so that the connection essentially is broken if the town does not obtain this entire property. Ron Clark of the Community Preservation Committee stated that the town has other needs than purchasing open space and 32 acres of land for free is better than 43 for two million. Number one, it's, it's really a great development plan. And as mentioned before, the choice before the town is having 32 acres of open space for free or paying $2 million for 42 acres of open space. And I don't think any business would make that decision. I don't think any family would make that decision if they need those funds for other activities. And we have other critical needs in this town, including, as mentioned, a new school, a library, new DPW garage, and other uh, capital needs coming downstream. After debate ended, 152 voted for the purchase, 113 against, which failed the required two-thirds vote. The other two articles, which were essentially reliant on Article 3 passing, were immediately motioned and agreed for no vote. For more information about the special town meeting, check out our website, hcam.tv. After nearly 35 years in business at 85 West Main Street, the Golden Spoon Restaurant will be closing their doors. But the good news is, the well-known breakfast and coffee establishment will reopen in the near future at a new location. The Golden Spoon in Hopkinton started as a coffee shop in 1981 before turning into a full restaurant in 2001. The Golden Spoon has become a Sunday morning tradition for many local residents, but as owner Bill Morgan said, the Golden Spoon isn't saying goodbye, they're saying see you later. The restaurant will open again in about six months at a new location. It's tough. It's tough to... Uh to say see you later to everybody because we're going to be reopening but uh, people like it they like the they like the charm of the old building um, but it, it's just made it too tough for us to operate we need a new space uh, so for us it's exciting uh, we get to take a little break and open up in a new place and uh, hopefully have everybody come back and uh, you know carry on I'm sure they will. Uh, where are you guys going to be uh, reopening? Um, well, uh, we're going to be opening up at the uh, next door. Uh, there's a new building going up um, on Lumber Street, um, at the same property where the dynasty is. Uh, and that's, unfortunately, the timing didn't work out. You know, uh, we thought we were going to be able to make a, a little bit sooner transition. Uh, we were hoping for six weeks, but it, it might be six months. So we get to take a little break and um, have a little bit of time off, regroup, and uh, reopen. And I'm imagining that uh, it'll be probably a, a bigger space that you're going to reopen in, or is it going to be about the same size? Uh, a little bit bigger, um, a, you know, a little bit better set up. You know, this is really a, 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 an old farmhouse that... Um, Fred and Jean Russo took and they, they made part of it to like a little truck stop, a coffee shop. Um, and then as the town grew and uh, my wife and I took over, we expanded it more of a restaurant. Um, and so it's, you know, it's worked because we've had long time staff and, and we've kind of made it work, but it's really not um, optimum. <laughs> it's really, uh, you know, it, it's difficult. Um, so just getting in a new, a new space, you know, be more efficient, um, you know, easier. But uh, basically, the, probably the same seating, maybe just a little bit more. Um, we really, you know, we, we fill it up on the weekends, but most days, you know, with a, just a really short wait. Um, you know, it's a, it's a casual place, it's fast service, so, you know, the tables turn over. We don't really need a lot more seating. Uh, so, you know, we have about 70 now, so if we could, you know, 75 or 80, that would be great. Sarah, you guys have had a lot of success in this space where you guys are now. Uh, do you have any uh, words for the community and, and your customers that have uh, come throughout the years? Well, we've considered ourselves fortunate to have a long-time staff and uh, long-time regular customers, um, and we, uh, we appreciate it, and, uh, and we've loved uh, meeting and getting to know everybody, and... Um, it's really, that's been the, 
the, the best part of the business. That's really what that's why we've loved the business. Um, and so we, you know, we look forward to seeing everybody again. Like I say, it's not a goodbye; it's a see you later. The Golden Spoon is more than more than just a building. <laughs> so uh, we like to say it's an experience, <laughs> and it certainly has been an experience. <laughs> We've, we've been here as, it, as the town has grown, and uh, we, you know we want to continue and go into the future. You know we like uh, to see other families come in and the kids grow. And a lot of kids have worked here, and uh, it's really it's really been nice. It's really been a pleasure. The Golden Spoon is expected to open once again in about six months. Local veterans were recently honored at the Boston State House, including a couple of Hopkinton veterans for their services in one of the most brutal battles of World War II, the Battle of Iwo Jima. There was a parade through downtown Boston, followed by the ceremony at the State House to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the battle. Well, it's to, mainly to honor our, our veterans that participated in the battle and lost their lives. And a lot of them suffered dearly for the rest of their lives. Uh, it's an honor to, to be part of this, to win and to be remembered. Just over 70 years ago, on February 19, 1945, 30,000 U.S. Marines landed on the island of Iwo Jima, an island of the Japanese volcano islands with an approximate area of about 8 square miles and positioned south of Tokyo. The goal of the marine invasion, known as Operation Detachment, was to capture airfields on the island in order to attack the Japanese mainland. The Imperial Japanese Army positioned themselves in heavily fortified bunkers with heavy artillery gunning down U.S. Marines as they pushed forward onto the island. U.S. Marines had little cover as they advanced on the island, and thousands were wounded or killed in the first few days of the battle. Over 70,000 Americans were used to capture Iwo Jima against roughly 23,000 Japanese, with most Japanese refusing anything less than fighting to the death. It would not be until March 26, 1945, the island would be secured by U.S. Marines, and in the 36-day long battle, American losses included over 6,000 killed and over 17,000 wounded. Iwo Jima was the only battle by the U.S. Marine Corps in which American casualties exceeded the Japanese. Twenty-seven U.S. military personnel were rewarded the Medal of Honor for their actions during the Battle of Iwo Jima. Of the 27 medals awarded, 22 were presented to Marines and five were presented to United States Navy sailors, four of whom were hospital corpsmen attached to the Marine Infantry units. This was 28 percent of the 82 Medals of Honor awarded to Marines in the entirety of World War II in the Pacific. Several local survivors of the Battle of Iwo Jima were honored at the State House in Boston. A few veterans from Hopkinton were also in attendance. In the photo, you could see Rob Phipps, the son of Iwo Jima survivor Paul Phipps, Hank Alessio, U.S. Army Signal Corps veteran, Mike Whalen in the back, a Marine veteran, Pat Lynch in the front, a Marine veteran of the Korean conflict, and Bob Lavoie, a Marine veteran and survivor of Iwo Jima and the Frozen Chosen. Also in the photo, Ed O'Leary, U.S. Army veteran, and Adam Lavoie, son of Iwo Jima survivor Bob Lavoie. In those three days of preparation, three days of preparation, each heavy warship was given an area to fire upon. And combined with all the ships surrounding the island, each warship was assigned to fire for a straight six-hour period on their firing station. Fire consistently for six hours, and then they would rotate off, and another ship would rotate in and continue the fire. 24 hours a day, three days straight, on a five by seven square mile island, not bigger than Logan Airport. Every square inch of that island, had rounds hitting on But guess what? Other than get rid of the foliage, it didn't do much for the defenses. It didn't soften them up at all. Only the historic effort of our nation's Marines, sailors, airmen, soldiers, were attached to those three divisions with boots on the ground, 
would be able to unseat those Japanese resistance. And you're looking at eight of them today. And all of a sudden there's a big cheer. And somebody said, we're raising the flag. And this is a flag we're raising to the team of Jesus. Thank you to all who have served and currently serve to protect our country. A longtime town employee, Louis Monjat, has retired after 46 years of service. Louis was recently honored and thanked for his years of valuable service to the town at the Board of Selectmen meeting. After 46 years of service to the town of Hopkinton, working with the Department of Public Works and as a call firefighter, Louis Mongiat is retiring. The Board of Selectmen recognized Louis for his years of service to the town during the Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, it's with uh, great honor tonight that we're here to honor uh, Louis for 46 years, uh, quite a uh, tenured employee of the town. I think only surpassed by his very good friend uh, Cookie Cullman, who was a little over 50. Um, Louis has truly been you know, a, the true definition of a DPW worker. As you just read off, he's had many different hats in town. Uh, always helping out in any any way that he can for every department, not just the ones that he served on. Um, unfortunately, you know we're we're losing him at the department. Between him and Jeans uh, leaving this past fall, we've lost 80 years off the bat. Uh, thankfully, they're both still on speed dial, so <laughs> they've agreed to uh, help us out when we need them. Uh, Louis has just been a, a great employee, always available for overtime. You know, always there to help. Like I said, anybody out uh, whenever you can. He was instrumental in years of service with the uh, the marathon committee, helping take care of the starting line and um, the doughboy and other things that Cookie used to do, um, taking that over as well. Uh, probably the the biggest thing uh, that Louis was able to do was I can't even remember yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, when they put in the pipes back in the uh, the late 50s and uh, 60s and stuff like that. He knows where all those things are. So if you need to know where something is that's not in the old maps, he'll lead us out in the field and tell you right where that drainage pipe is or where the water lane was put in. I mean, that's stuff that, uh, you know, unfortunately we can't get back. So uh, hopefully we can sit down with him and get that on tape before, <laughs> before he forgets. But he, he's been, a, you know, just a pleasure to have around and a real true uh, definition of the town worker. When we look around at the crowd that we have here, um, you know, not just folks from DPW, water and sewer, but uh, people from all different departments in town. It, it really is a testament to, uh, you know, the impact that you've had in town and the people you've touched. Uh, so, you know, we thank you for your service. Um, we do have, uh, we have a, a, a gift uh, for you. Congratulations, Louie, and uh, we're going to miss you down there, that smiling face in the morning, and uh, yeah, <laughs> never complain. <laughs> but uh, no, the guys all chipped in. It was the uh, water sewer and the highway. We all chipped in, and uh, we got them a nice jacket. Um, you know, Dan Bates actually designed the thing and ordered it up, and uh, I think you're going to like it. I think it's the girls at Bowling are going to really uh, come out of the stands and yeah. <laughs> check you out. But try it on, see if you like it. Louis's been our treasurer for the union for, uh, I don't know how many years it's been, right? Since it started. Since it started. 60-something, 60 69, 70. Nice. Yep. Looks good. Thank you. Good luck and good health. Yep. Do you have anything uh, you'd like to say, uh, Louis? I was only as good as the guys that I worked with. That's what it is, and I did anything I could for everybody. So it didn't matter who you were as long as I helped you. Right. That's what my motto was. Thank you. Thank you. The Hopkinton Hillers have many teams in the postseason. In our latest sports report, we have an update on the wrestling team's postseason and highlights of an exciting boys basketball TVL matchup between Hopkinton and Medfield. The Hillers wrestling team also had some postseason success. 
Ryan Mastriani placed second in the divisionals for the 106-pound weight class. Ethan Puvaka finished fourth in the 113-pound weight class. Colin Shea fourth in the 120-pound weight class. Adam Coria third in the 126-pound. Sam Esfahani third in the 132-pound. Lucas Kaminsky second in the 138-pound. Daniel Murphy fifth in the 145-pound. Zach Herlihy first in the 152-pound. Chris Zarba third in the 160-pound. Wyatt Beach third in the 182-pound. Conrad Lavoy first in the 220-pound. And Josh Sokol first in the 285-pound. Hopkinton's Josh Sokol won the Division II state championship in the 285-pound weight class. The Hillers finished 14th overall in Division II. The Hopkinton Hiller JV hockey team won their second straight championship as they beat Hudson 2-0. Hudson gave the Hiller JV team their only loss earlier in the season. In girls hockey, Dover Sherborne Hopkinton came from behind to beat Mansfield Oliver Ames 5-3 in their final game of the season. The team finishes 4-13-1. Congratulations to the Hopkinton Hillers cheer team. They won their fourth consecutive TVL championship this past weekend over at Norton High School. The Hopkinton Hillers basketball team took on Medfield Wednesday, February 11th with a chance to clinch a postseason spot. Late in the second quarter, Jake Doherty doing what he likes to do, hitting threes and draws the foul, misses the free throw, and it was 32-27, Medfield leading at half. Third quarter, the Hillers fight back early. Ryan passes to Odell. Odell bobbles, regains control, and laces it through. Then on the following inbound, Mitch Nagel catches Medfield sleeping. Gets the steal, misses the shot, rebuttal no good, but Pat Ryan takes care of business to put the Hillers up 39-37. Medfield leading late in the fourth quarter, 59-55. Matt Locke locks in and bangs a three from the top to make it a one-point game. The game would go into overtime, tied at 65. Unfortunately for Medfield, Matt Locke stayed locked in, nails this three to make it 68-66 Hopkinton. Then following possession, Pat Ryan with the steal, takes it coast to coast and off the boards. Hiller's up 70-66. Hopkinton never looks back and takes the victory 77-72. Matt Locke put up 21 points in the win. And the Hillers are in the playoffs as they get their 10th win of the year against Medfield. On February 13th, Norton beat Hopkinton 56-35. And then in the last game of the regular season, the Hillers defeated Medway 69-57 to finish 11-9. The Hopkinton Hillers clinch the fifth seed in the Division II Central bracket. For up-to-date sports news, check out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Facebook and Twitter pages. A lot is coming up on the HCAM channels. To tell you more, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Sunday, March 8th at 10 a.m., the Council on Aging meeting from March 4th will air. On Monday, March 9th at 7 p.m., Amy Meverack recites her slam poetry in Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. So I didn't write a poem, I didn't have time, but I can rhyme off the top of my head, bed said dead Fred, because I have read Dr. Seuss thousands of times. The Board of Selectmen will hold a meeting on Tuesday, March 10th at 6.30 p.m. and it will air live on HCAM TV. At 8.30 p.m. on Wednesday, March 11th, Stephanie G shares how she went from her family's business to owning her own store in Business Matters. I used to make really? bows in the back room and at 8 I started engraving. And we also had a trophy shop so I've done um, drilling marble trophies. I started when I was a kid. In Studio Session Live on Thursday, March 12th at 4.30 p.m., Marianne Pasts performs her original folk music. The train's arriving at the station It's much too late to go a different way At 7 p.m., 
The Hop Seat returns with Elaine Lazarus and Don McAdam. Email questions to live at hkm.tv or call 508-625-1640 during the program to have your questions answered live on the air. On Sunday, March 15th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from March 9th will air. At 2 p.m., the elementary school building committee meeting from March 9th will air. Would you like to have the HKIM Insider delivered to you every week? If so, just send me an email at Courtney at HKIM.TV. Also, please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HKIM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HKIM News. Be sure to check our website, HKIM.TV, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well. Thanks to the HEF, HPTA, and 300th Anniversary Committee, we're bringing a program forward to honor alumni of Hopkinton High School. We're looking for nominations, and the criteria include graduated from the high school at least 10 years ago, demonstrated a high level of achievement, and made significant contributions to work, home, community, or volunteer efforts, and exhibited leadership, character, and service. Please visit our website to participate in nominating your HHS grad. Stand open heart, open door.